it's so sad to see all these beautiful trees infected with uh, emerald ash borer. And this tree is a classic example of what you can look for if you're trying to find out if your trees have it. These are uh, woodpecker pecks, sort of going up the trunk of the tree. Um, if you look up, I don't know if you can see larval damage, but there's you know bark missing. Um, and then on this tree here, you can see the characteristic tight serpentine larval galleries um, just under the bark. And you can see some D-shaped exit holes. Uh, that's not always the best field mark, but uh, certainly the larval galleries are a quite unique feature of emerald ash borer infestations. And so are these kind of, um, I don't know if you can see around here, they're sort of these, they don't go too far into the tree, um, but they're woodpecker packs. They're just into where the woodpeckers are gonna find those insects. So what does this damage mean for the tree? Well, so as you can see, so the woodpecker damage is something the tree could withstand. It could create callus tissue over it. But what the problem is gonna be is that these larval galleries are eventually gonna girdle the tree. They're gonna cut off the flow of water and nutrients up and down the tree trunk. If you remember your basic botany, xylem and phloem, uh, the phloem won't be going because um, the galleries will cut it off. And so then the tree can't get water and nutrients into the upper levels and it just starts to die off. And you can see that it's uh, not doing very well here. Probably the galleries don't extend too much around to the other side yet because I'm not seeing the bark coming off there, but there are obviously insects there because the woodpeckers are going after them. And so just in terms of what we know about uh, the progress of the emerald ash borer, once a tree has emerald ash borer, how long until it's no longer alive? It usually takes about three to five years, um, and then they're dead, uh, which is quite unfortunate, because I'm looking around and there are these beautiful ash trees. There's a beautiful one, and you can see it's got the woodpecks on it. Um, there's another nice one, more woodpecks. That one hardly looks damaged at all, but I can see a woodpeck about a 16 feet up there. Oh, they're further in, they're into the wood, right? Oh wow, did you just find some galleries? Yeah. Tons of them here. Holy cow, look at that. And that's an example of a tree that didn't look like it had any symptoms. You got some D-shaped holes. And then as soon as Dan started peeling it, you can yeah, see but that. Yeah, I mean, it has a fair amount of woodpecker oh, activity. Yeah. You know, this woodpecker right here, here. Um, yeah. You know, it was a stress tree. Anyway, it's good. So these crews uh, need to know what the emerald ash borer damage looks like. I mean, I've looked at a lot of websites, but to have an actual tree that shows a sign is very helpful. And the other reason we're taking these out is that this is private property, and the landowner has been very cooperative, but we'd like to bring people in to see the damage, and it's easier to do that on public property. So we thought instead of bringing them in to see the trees, we would take the trees out and people can look at them and see the damage there. And there's no concern about transporting the emerald ash borer from here to somewhere else that you're... Um, there's plenty of concern, <laughs> um, but we have big heavy, heavy duty bags and we're gonna bag it and then we're gonna keep the logs in a freezer. So that will um, prevent the further development of the emerald ash borers. Um, as long as they don't warm up, they're just gonna stay in their larval state. So as part of trying to figure out um, how extensive this infestation is, um, because as you know, um, you can have a healthy looking tree and it can be infested. So we are um, going to train crews who will be driving around on roads in Orange County in the coming weeks, um, trying to find trees that look like uh, this one with a woodpecker flex, so that we'll send another crew in get landowner permission and see if we can slice into those trees and find the insect um, to verify that it's in a, an adjacent town or further out. So that's why it's helpful if you can send us photos and we can say, oh, that's not really emerald ash borer, oh, or wow, that is emerald ash borer and we didn't know it was in that town. We're gonna contact that owner and go um, check it out.
Many Vermonters know about the restrictions on firewood in the past. Uh, what's the future hold for that? Is it gonna, is, are we gonna have even more quarantines on firewood for in, within Vermont? So um, we do have an existing firewood law um, that's in place and that's to prevent people from bringing firewood in from out of state and we're also trying to prevent people from moving it more than 50 miles. Um, so we're asking people to continue to not move firewood. Just because we have the insect here doesn't mean it's okay to move firewood. Once a quarantine is in place, you can move wood within that quarantine area, but we're still asking people to kind of um, not move firewood. There are other invasive insects that can be moved on firewood. It's usually um, the means by which the emerald ash borer has moved from place to place. So um, my best message that citizens can do in addition to identifying trees with damage is not move firewood and continue to not move firewood. One of the problems with finding emerald ash borer is it's often high up in the tree. So I can see those woodpecker pecks coming further down. So I might be able to peel and find some larval galleries, but usually in the early parts of the infestation, the insects are much higher up. So what do people do if they see something that they think is emerald ash borer? The most helpful thing people can do for us right now as we're trying to figure out the extent of this infestation is if you see something that looks like this, the woodpecks, um, larval galleries, take a picture and post it to vtinvasives.org. Or if you know a forester, if you're shy and you don't want to put it up on a website, um, call a forester, county foresters, um, forest and parks personnel, just tell somebody with some connection. Um, ideally, you'd go through vtinvasives.org because that way we can keep track of um, who's contacted us, which of us have gone and contacted them, and things like that. But right now we're just trying to figure out where it is. So if you think you have it, let us know. That would be very helpful.